how is everybody going welcome back to the channel armor studio nyc back today with another video today we're going to be painting the martyr 3. uh didn't have a video last week because of the holidays so happy thanksgiving to those of you who live in the united states and to those abroad just welcome back and i hope you enjoyed your week uh, so we're going to start off by priming uh, a lot of the aspects here so like we said we have figures we're going to prime those um, and take it easy on me because this is going to be my first time painting figures like for real kind of um, but this method I learned from Uncle Night Shift who is a prominent member of this modeling community and pretty much what you want to do is painting characters there's a couple ways to go about it uh, you can airbrush miniatures which is something I haven't really mastered or thought about doing yet it's also something that i've been thinking about doing um, or you can just prime it and then paint it in the way or in the colors that you want to and then add highlights and recessed shadows but that sounds like a lot of work especially for our particular armor modeler as myself um, i want to focus more on the actual tank than anything else so after you're done priming this is going to be pretty much our shadow layer it's going to count the same uh, we're also going to prime the tank since we have the primer in hand already. So it does look still very incomplete, but it's just nature of the beast because we do need to... Nice camera work. And because we do need to paint everything else prior to doing so. But anyway, back to our little soldiers here. So uh, the name of the game is now we want to make highlights and we're going to use that we're going to produce that using Tamiya's flat white. So when characters stand, obviously you have a source of light, this being the sun or just atmospheric light, and it's going to be shining down on the character. So you want to take your white paint and you want to spray from above pointing down. That way you will get nice highlights, but you'll also be able to keep a lot of the shadows. So. The way I think about it, you kind of want the character to look like it just came out of a black and white photo. Which probably isn't a bad idea for a model now that I think about it. Anyway, uh, so we want to do this to every single one of our guys and this is pretty much the result that we should get. Also, I might mention that the reason why I personally don't feel comfortable airbrushing models or model figures is because the it makes the features look very soft so it kind of looks like fuzzy best way i can describe it is we're going from 440p to like 1080 or 4k but anyway the method that we're going to use now to paint and these are going to be some of the paints that we use for our guys here uh, we're going to glaze the model so instead of laying on layers of paint or just having one pass and then creating highlight and creating shadow we're just going to make a transparent layer of paint that will soak up the shadows and the highlights all at the same time um, being careful to yes make it a little bit of a translucent layer but it's not going to be a wash where a wash only recedes into the crevices of the figure that we have painted here that just wouldn't really suit our needs so it's really good using a different set of paints for this aside from the Tamiya paints because uh, well we use water-based acrylics for this because it's very easy to dilute these water-based acrylics just one drop of paint to two drops of water and this is pretty much the result that you get it may take a few passes to really build up that paint color but at the end of the day we retain a lot of those highlights and we retain a lot of those shadows and we don't really have to do much touch-up work which sounds like a dream to me because time is of the essence when plastic modeling and balancing life i believe this figure i think the paint was a little bit too diluted as you could tell in that helmet i did have some coverage issues but just let it dry and then a few other passes and you'll be good to go. So we used a German uniform for the top bit and then we're going to use German gray for the bottom bit. And this is just of the crew members. 
for our commander, we're going to use uh, German Grey the whole way throughout, just so that way we could differentiate his uniform from that of the crew, and you'll see that in just a little bit. But uh, same rules apply, even though this is a darker paint, you do not have to dilute it anymore because it still catches a lot of those um, highlights and such. So uh, this little star of the model here, he's going to be holding our shell or our round rather. And uh, we just used brass paint and we're just going to cover the top in black. So. I do have to work on the skin. The skin I did retouch up after, but after all of the brown and other aspects are painted, this is pretty much uh, what you get. So again, please take it easy on me. It was my first time painting figures. Uh, for our main model, we're going to use dark yellow, and we're also going to use red brown and field gray to complete our tri camo uh, for the Martyr 3. And we're also going to be using my Infinity CR Plus. It's a 0.15 millimeter nozzle. And we're going to really put this airbrush through its paces today. Because instead of base coating the whole thing in dark yellow, we're just going to go and we're going to do our cloud uh, pattern. Uh, just because it creates a little bit more wear. The paint isn't exactly uh, perfect or smooth or even and we kind of want to achieve that for a worn out model that has seen a few battles you know um, maybe the paint has faded while it's been out in the field but um the importance of using the black primer again cannot be overstated because with gray primer we would actually need to cover the whole model uh, as gray does not serve as a good worn color unless you're obviously painting a gray model but in this case you would want a little bit of a darker color to show really some of that wear coming through and um, I think the Infinity CR Plus does a really good job here um, maybe I'll do an airbrush review video uh, I've been thinking about possibly picking up a new detail brush not that I have a significant problem with the Infinity CR Plus but just in terms of the trigger, it is starting to give me a couple of issues. So yeah, uh, but for now, the Infinity is working still pretty good. Um, the negatives are manageable. Uh, maybe we'll just keep it on hand. I don't know. But we're just going to apply this for the entire model. Now, the paint does not have to be applied overly thick obviously because we're doing a little bit of a cloud pattern also because this layer is going to get covered up with a lot of chipping and the tri camo some light weathering some rusting so this isn't really the focal point but it is a nice backdrop or canvas to the art that we're trying to create on the model itself so you just want to go and do this throughout the entire tank uh, you could really achieve this with any color, I found, uh, even German gray, you could do this with green. Uh, a little bit harder with green though, because green does fade significantly into other types of colors. So yeah, this is pretty much what we have going on. So now that we have a nice foundation layer, we cannot forget to paint our side pieces as well. Uh, so the interior of these were the same color as the exterior. Trust me, I had to do a little bit of research on that one because I wasn't sure. Typically, interiors go in white, but uh, here it was the same. It was the same color. We're gonna take our brass paint again, and we're just going to carefully go about painting all of these shells. Now, whatever excess you do get picked up, like right there, uh, I was just able to touch up with the uh, with the dark yellow from Tamiya. Um, so that way we keep the brass color to where the brass color is supposed to be, which is on the round itself. So these go in brass and then the actual projectile uh, will go in black. I wish there were some uh, decals that I could have applied to these that the kit came with, but it did not. So yeah, just that extra level of detail was, was kind of lacking in it kind of bothered me just a little bit but at the end of the day it still looks pretty good and then when 
uh, you'll see later when you put everything all together with the figures inside um, you know you kind of do have to peek around and, uh, in there so it's serviceable as decent detail but not as detailed as I really would have liked the black that we're using for the actual projectile is just regular flat black from Tamiya And obviously we're hand brushing this so that why we don't get any overspray as much as I like the look of an airbrushed finish. Um, this dries really, really well and levels out really, really well. So that why we get a, uh, a nice flat finish with no brush strokes or any other type of weird texture on the paint. But since we have our brush in hand we're also going to go along and just pretty much detail everything else so as usual and very popular on this channel uh, we're going to rust this exhaust and uh, one thing I really like about this model is that it has a long exhaust pipe which we were able to paint in the dark gray now that we finally started painting the interior the interiors finished painting uh, we can finally start to uh, assemble the model which is which was very satisfying after a whole time of just having it in complete pieces being able to put it all together uh, finally uh, let all of our work really start to come together and you really got an idea of how separating each section in the same manner obviously and then putting it all together leads to some really interesting accurate yet easy or results than say if I was to assemble the model and then attempt to paint the inside it would have I feel like it just would have been a disaster and a logistical nightmare which we don't like as armor modelers um, even though these are rough and rugged machines we do want as easy a process as possible so anything to make that process easier for us but still able to maintain a decent amount of detail on our work I think we would all be in favor for Since these parts are painted and there is a lot of overspray, there is a uh, layer of paint or two layers of paint rather because you do have a primer uh, in between the plastics. So I went ahead and I used Tamiya's thicker cement, which um, is a little bit obviously thicker. And um, if you let it sit for a couple of seconds, it becomes very, very adhesive. So um, in that way, it would just kind of chew through the paint level or layer and we would just be able to glue it with no problem. I feel like with the Tamiya Thin Cement we may have had to do a few passes. Probably would have been a little bit more of a mess. So yeah. Um, in addition to all the other details on this model, uh, we are going to do our copper wire little trick as you can see there. Uh, so we painted up some additional things that we're going to hang from it. Now. As you can see in the beginning here, the troubles with the infinity do continue. However, we're just going to push through it and thankfully we were able to get it to work. But again, we're going to use Tamiya's red brown. Now, this pink color is amazing to me because inside the bottle, it's brown. Like it does not have any hint of red whatsoever, but it atomizes so well and the airbrush atomizes it so well that it actually comes out and it's literally red brown. Shocker, right? Um, but this is going to be our first pass with tri camo. Now, uh, I typically enjoy freehanding it. I know a lot of other armor modelers out there love uh, doing like some type of um, like putty mask or like a tack mask, uh, so that way they can get nice like even lines, um, which totally looks perfectly ser serviceable. But again, um, I'm just showing that. Uh, freehanding is possible. You do get some soft edges, but with weathering and other techniques, uh, we can really um, not make it a noticeable part of the bottle. So, um, when doing tri camo, uh, you also have to have a kind of an idea in your head of what you really want to achieve because there are different types of patterns with these. So, Germany was really the only 
nation or faction to have a tri camo on almost all of their late war uh, armor. And, you know, the the pattern just varied from super thin lines of an assortment of colors. So you had this reddish brown, you had the field gray, which we're going to see later. Um, you had very thick lines. You had some patterns that covered up the, the dark yellow completely. But um, yeah, so just get a basic idea of what you wanted. I wanted to represent each color of this without really overshadowing the base color because I feel like the Martyr 3s uh, were typically more yellow uh, than green or red. So yeah, just went ahead and I wanted to represent each color evenly. Um, so yeah, I think it uh, I think it worked out pretty well. Uh, this isn't the first time that I've tri camoed a tank. There was a Panther Five that I did before I started the channel that I really wish I would have waited to complete until I started the YouTube channel, but I wasn't. And maybe I'll do a uh, maybe I'll do like a pass build video uh, one day, just so that way I could show off some of those older models that I have done, um, which like turned out pretty well. But not to the level of detail that we're trying to achieve with this uh, martyr. Uh, this one we're going to add a whole bunch of just different steps, really. We're going to chip it, we're going to add foliage, um, we're going to really, really focus in and get down that weathering technique with the paste rather than the um, textured paint. And um, yeah, we're just really going to try to do our best work with this model here. So just, uh, just enjoy the painting for just a little bit. So guys, at the end of the day, well, not really at the end of the day, but um, in terms of just completion for our camo, this is pretty much the scheme that we're going to be working with. Um, it may seem just a little bit linear, but I don't know. I really like the way that the road wheels came out. Uh, they did paint the road wheels in uh, similar colors and all types of different patterns. And um, yeah, so I think that looks, I think it looks pretty good. If you notice that this martyr has a lot of rivet detail and we cannot let that go to waste, even though you clearly see it here, we are going to have it just a little bit more pronounced. So we are going to take out our Infinity CR Plus once again, and we're just going to um, hit all of these rivets with our grime paint so that way we can enhance the detail of these because once we start weathering and once we start adding foliage and, and other aspects on this model uh, a lot of this detail will be lost and we don't really want that so we want to make sure that we continue um, showing off our detail throughout the entire model. And obviously you just want to do this to the entire model, just so that way you're not leaving out any possible details. And after we're done profounding all of our details, this is pretty much what we're working with. You can see that finally, you can see that interior looks really, really good. Um, you also want to, don't forget to add the camo to the gun barrel, which I almost forgot. So now it's time for decals. Pretty much very, very simple. Not a whole lot of decals. I think there were a grand total of five on this model. So um, that's not, this is not a issue at all. 
Um, I did change um, my approach to doing decals, by the way. I used to gloss varnish it, and then after I would gloss varnish it, I would, I would add it just because it was a little bit easier to manipulate, and then I would come back over and I would hit it with another varnish of a different, um, different finish. But at the end of the day, uh, it was just an extra step that I found at some point really unnecessary. So just take your Mr. Mark setter and then you're going to place the decal in water, take it out, put the Mark setter on the model and then place the decal on the Mark setter. And what it does is it just softens the decal up and it really makes it um, adhere to the model. It also prevents silvering, which is very important. And um, it doesn't give you that look of a popped out decal. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me this week. I'll see you all next week with the weathering video where we really get down to a lot of business. Thank you for tuning in.